Question number eight from a P1 practice paper B, um, International A level. Um, question about differentiation. Uh, part one of the question tells us to differentiate this expression y equals 2x squared minus 4x minus x squared times root x. And we're also told in this question that x is greater than zero, which might come in handy in other parts of the question. Um, before we can differentiate this, we see here you've got x squared times root x, which should really be combined into one statement, okay? Into one x term. So you've got y equals 2x squared minus 4x minus x squared, and that's times x to the power of a half. Okay, I, I want to combine that into one x term before I can differentiate it. You okay, can't differentiate it otherwise. I can't differentiate them separately, multiply them, multiply them together. <coughs> so I have to basically um, combine them together using the laws of indices. So I have two terms with the same base multiplied by each other, so I add the powers. So that's going to be 2 plus a half, which is 2 and a half, or 5 over 2. So you've got y equals 2x squared minus 4x minus x to the power of 5 over 2. Now we're ready to differentiate. So uh, one little point is some people, they start writing dy dx straight away without having differentiated, just like as if, oh, my answer for the differential is going to be this, whatever. No, you don't write dy dx until you have um, started different to differentiate. Now, I haven't started to differentiate up to now. All I've done is simplified and uh, prepared my um, equation so that I can differentiate it. Now, once I start differentiating, that's when I write dy dx. I put dy dx is equal to, now remember, differentiating, you multiply by the power, so you've got 2 times 2, which is 4, and then you take 1 from the power, so that's x to the power of 1, which don't have to write the 1 there, and then when you have a constant like uh, minus 4x, you differentiate it, basically becomes just 4. You could think about it in terms of, that's a 1 here, I multiply 1 by 4, it gives me 4, and then I take 1 from the power, so it'll be x to the power of 0, and as we know, anything to the power of 0 is 1, so it's just minus 4 times 1, which is minus 4. Then you have minus 5 over 2 times x, and then you take 1 from the power, so you've got 5 over 2 minus 1, which is 2 over 2, so that gives you 3 over 2. Okay, so there we have our differential dy dx. Okay, if you want to, um, yeah, we can leave it like that for now. Then part B says, find the value of x k such that d squared y over dx squared plus k times root x equals 4. So th what does this mean here? Well, that means the differential of dy dx. That's what it means. d squared y dx squared means you're finding, you're differentiating with respect to x, dy dx. That's what you're doing. That's what it means. Differentiate dy dx with respect to x. That's why it comes out as d squared y over dx squared. Okay, so d squared y over dx squared is equal to, so I take this, okay, so we know that y is equal to, I'll just write it up here so we can see it clearer, y is equal to 4x minus 4 minus 5 over 2, x to the power of 3 over 2. So I've got to differentiate this further, um, further one more time. So again, you've got 4x, that becomes 4. The, the constant becomes zero, and you differentiate constant becomes zero, because you can think of it as x to the power of zero. Zero times four becomes zero, the whole thing becomes zero. Um, and here we're gonna have three over two times minus five over two, which is minus 15 over four. And you take one from the power, so you get x to the power of a half. Okay, and now we've got to find the value of k such that this is equal to four. So take our expression for d squared y, over dx squared, which is 4 minus 15 over 4 x to the power of a half plus k times root x equals 4. So we've got to find the value of k. So let's first of all uh, just rearrange, let's, let's write this as 4 minus 15 over 4 times root x. The square root of uh, x is the same as x to the power of a half. Um, and let's that's equal to 4 minus k times root x. I've just brought that on this side. And we can see comparing the coefficients of root x. So if you compare, okay, the 
the root x, the root x is, you can see you got minus 15 over 4 is equal to minus k. So that means k is equal to 15 over 4. Okay, you can see that from um, just looking at these two equations. I guess that's the easiest way to solve, um, to find the, the value of x here. It's the easiest way to do it. There's probably other ways to do it, but this is probably the easiest way to do it, just by comparing. They both are exactly the same. You have 4, you have a 4, you have a root x, you have a root x. So that means you've got minus 15 over 4 and minus k must be the same. Minus k must be equal to minus 15 over 4. So k is 15 over 4. And there we have the answer to that part of the question. And that's part A and B done. Now part C says the curve C has equation y equals 3x cubed um, minus 2x squared. And find the equation of the normal to the curve at x equals minus 1. Now this question is a question where we have, move this down a bit, it's a completely different question from part um, A. Okay, so some students actually got confused by this and they, they started to try to find the normal to the equation that was given before. But no, this is a different equation, a completely different question now. Okay, so here we have to find the equation to, of the normal to the curve. And the normal to a curve, like if this, is, if this is your curve, okay, and supposing this is the point where x equals minus 1, I'm not saying that this, this looks like that, I'm just giving an example, okay. So, if you were to draw a tangent at that point, okay, that would be the, um, the tangent. It's a straight line which has the same gradient of the curve at that point. Now, the normal to a curve is basically the line which is perpendicular to that tangent. So if we can find the gradient of the tangent to the curve, which is the gradient of the curve at the same point, then the negative reciprocal of that will be the gradient of the normal to the curve at that point. Okay? So the normal is basically a straight line which passes through the point mentioned, okay? but it passes through it so that it's perpendicular to the gradient of the curve at that point. Okay, so to find the equation of uh, any straight line, we need two things. We need the gradient. Okay, and also we need um, the point. Okay. All right. So we know that uh, the point that it passes through is when x is minus 1. Okay. And when x equals minus 1, we can say y is equal to 3 times minus 1 cubed minus 2 times minus 1 squared. Now remember, when you, when you raise a negative number to an odd power, it stays negative. So you're going to have minus 3, and that's going to be, when you raise a negative number to an even power, it becomes positive. That's going to be minus 2, minus 2 times plus 1, so minus 2. So minus 3 minus 2 is minus, negative, minus 5. So we know that it passes through the point minus 1 minus 5. And to find the gradient, we have to find the, the differential. So to find the gradient, we've got to find what dy dx is. So dy dx is 9x squared minus 4x. That's how you differentiate that. And we want to find it when x equals minus 1. So the gradient of the tangent will be 9 times minus 1 squared minus 4 times minus 1, which gives you 9 plus 4, which is 13. Okay, that's the gradient of the tangent. Therefore, the gradient of the normal is going to be the negative reciprocal, so it's going to be minus 1 over 13. And it goes to the point minus 1 and minus 5. So, therefore, we can now work out what we need to work out. Okay, we know that y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So you're going to have y minus, um, this is your x and this is your y value, so minus negative 5 equals m, which is minus 1 over 13, times x minus minus 1. Okay, and let's continue this. So here you have y plus 5. 
y plus 5 equals minus 1 over 13 times x plus 1. Now let me, what form do they ask us to give the answer in? In the form ax plus by plus c equals 0. So now the best thing to do really here would be to multiply both sides by 13. So you get rid of this 13. So you've got 13y plus 5 times 13 is 50 plus 6 is 15, which is 65, is equal to, and you've got minus x, and you've got minus 1. Okay, so if you bring everything on this side, you have x plus 13y plus 65 plus 166 is equal to 0. And there we have our equation of the straight line. Okay, in the form required, where A, B, and C are integers. Okay, so there we have our answer, and that's the end of this question.